Now? Okay. Okay, first of all, I would like to, uh, to thank uh, Yoram and Yakir for inviting me uh, to give uh, this, bit, this uh, presentation. I got the most difficult role today, being the last speaker before dinner. So I'll just make it short. And, uh, uh, and the other thing is, in my first half of my presentation, I will present the principle, uh, the engineering principle of this uh, new lens. Uh, it was designed by the smart guys, the engineers. I'm just a cardiac surgeon. So if you have any questions and more details, please ask uh, the engineers. So this is a lens, it's called the intensity. In a minute, I'll show you why. And this is only part of the full range lenses. And it is designed by a algorithm, which is called the gershberg saxton uh, algorithm combined with Hanita merit function. And it's altogether called the G GSH uh, kind of an algorithm. And the idea is, and the, they also use the Arizona Eye model, uh, which is very, uh, uh, useful for, for these designs. And the idea was to create a lens which would provide the most efficient way to distribute the energy. So it maximizes the intensity of the eye and most of the light will go to the, to the uh, uh, foci that we would like them to go and the least will be distributed uh, uh, as uh, lights which are not effective. Now, this is the principle of how it works. To make things uh, uh, quite simplified, First, the engineer decide on what kind of uh, 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 design. I wish it works. Okay. First, the engineer decide what kind of light distribution they want uh, the lens uh, to be. Then they make a run of this algorithm with inverse uh, for, uh, Fourier transform, and then it comes with some kind of uh, a design of a lens and this is the outcome of the first run. Now, if it is not exactly what they designed, they make a second run, which comes closer and closer, and then a third run, and so on, until it becomes similar more and more to what was the initial design or, or desired kind of, uh, um, of lens. Now, for this specific lens, it required 66 rounds altogether until they received the exactly light distribution as they uh, desired. Uh, this lens is a diffractive area, which is quite clear, large, 5.2. Uh, the aspheric diffractive uh, is on the posterior surface. The anterior surface is spheric. A uh, pupil-optimized lens and uh, um, with a spheric aberration of uh, minus 0.13 micron, 25% hydrophilic lens. And it also has a natural yellow uh, blue blocker. Now, what are the lens foci? We know a trifocal, the classical ones, uh, have the zero IOL power, which provide the uh, foci and, uh, at, the, at uh, infinity. And then the intermediate, which will be 1.5 at the IOL plane, 1.25 at spectacle plane or, or corner plane, that will be at about 80 centimeters. And then the near foci, which is going to be on the three diopters in the IOL plane, 2.5 in the spectacle plane, at about 40 centimeters. But here, in addition, there are two more foci, which are the in between the far and intermediate, which is termed here far intensified. This is why it's called intensity lens. And another one, which is, going to, which is uh, in between the near and intermediate at the two diopters, which is about 60 centimeters. So as you see, 40, 60, and 80 uh, centimeters, different foci. Which actually means this is not a trifocal lens, this is a polyfocal lens, multiple focal lens at various uh, uh, foci from center. This is what the energy is distributed. And now, as you see here, the, the number zero is here. This is the order of the lens. And let me just uh, say a, uh, just a word for those who are not familiar with diffractive optics. This is if you have two waves of light getting together, they cause what, uh, uh, what we call interference. And this is how the light is distributed to a different foci. So this first one is, is order zero, this is order one, and this is order two. When two waves of light meet together, if they are on the same phase, the same phase, they intensify each other. If they are on a different phase, they actually destruct each other. This is why we have light, and then black, and then white, light, and then uh, dark, and then light, and dark again. One other thing is that the zero order is the strongest, then it's a little bit weaker, and then a little bit weaker. 
all diffractive lenses, those sort of bifocal and trifocal lenses, the order zero is a distance, because this is the most important distance. And then it goes to intermediate and near, which means that the near is not as strong as the distance. And this is why one problem that we have all with multifocal or trifocal lenses, that the patient, if you have 100% of light going into the eye, you cannot have 100% in each of the focus. Since the most important is the distance, patients complain they do not see well for the near. So this is why there was a need to redistribute the light in, in this uh, lens. So as we can see here, the light distribution, the order zero is the intermediate. And then the other foci is one in the infinity, which is the far, and the other one in the, in the near. That means that light going for infinity, for distance, is quite strong and very satisfactory. But the most impressive part is this part, which is a near and the intermediate and the in-between, meaning that the intermediate and near light distribution is very effective in this specific lens with these three foci of uh, uh, far, intermediate, and near, and the two intensity here shown in red. Now, this is what the lens looks like. Now, this zero here is the zero distance from the center. So we have actually, we can see there's one, de diff one design here, second design here, and the third design is here. It's called, these are the zones, different zone, and each zone has its own specific characteristics. This is zone one, very close to the center, zone two, the intermediate, and zone three, at the far periphery of the lens. What it does is that the one zone one, which is close to the center, gave uh, the distance, the far intensity, and the near. Because when we read, we have also uh, not only convergence, but an accommodation, we also have meiosis. So this is why we need a good vision in the center part when the pupil goes down. As the pupil goes uh, uh, laterally, then we see the light distribution is for far and more towards the intermediate and less for the near. So the new focus is very much intensified in the center of the lens. These are the three foci, the classical, far, intermediate, and near. But in addition, we have two more, which is the far intensified. But what's more important is the near intensified, which this is what uh, I meant by having polyfoci or multifoci and not just three focal. It's, it's uh, the entire range. This is in comparison to the other lenses, such as a fine vision of Fiziol, uh, uh, Atelisa of Zeiss, Panoptics of Alcon, as compared to the intensity of uh, a Hanita lens. And as we can see, 86% uh, to 88% goes to the foci, and about 12 to 14 are lost. In the intensity, 925 goes to the desired foci, and 7.5 is lost. It doesn't look very impressive, but if you think of it, 14% is lost in these lenses, one half is lost with the new lens. So in terms of how much light is lost, there is a decrease of 40% of light loss, and this is what caused the halos and the glare in these lenses. This is another way to show the difference between the different uh, uh, lenses. Again, the Acrylisa, the fine vision and panoptics as compared to the intensity. And these red lines here show where the foci are good and effective. So for example, with the Acrylisa, this is a two millimeter pupil, very small one. So with the Acrylisa, it's effective from distance to uh, intermediate. There is, there is a gap here and in the near vision. Uh, fine vision, pretty much the same. Panoptics is stronger with the near to intermediate and there is a gap in the center and less with a uh, distance. As compared to that, the intensity is most of the range is covered except for a small range here. And this is at the two millimeter pupil, three millimeter pupil is even less. So it's effective for distance and for the intermediate, far intermediate until the, uh, the near as compared to much larger gaps in the other lenses. And for the 4.5, the same. Uh, uh, the other lenses, uh, panoptics, line vision, acrylisa, it's more gaps, less uh, uh, accuracy in these ranges in the, between the far and intermediate and also for the knee, whereas uh, for the intensity, a wide range of focus can be achieved for most distances. And also uh, the spread function uh, 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 test that we see, we compare the uh, panoptics with intensity. There is a small halo here. So the intensity uh, halo estimation is uh, 
at least as, as good as, uh, as uh, panoptics, if not better. Now, we did this clinical study. This is a very, very initial study. We just implanted the very first lenses. I think that so far we had about five patients, and we implanted in nine. So I'm going to show you the very, uh, very, very first results. The idea was to investigate uh, binocular and, uh, and, and monocular visual acuity for all distances and to measure the defocus curves. Prospective, single arm, single center, so far, single surgeon, myself, and open lam uh, labeled. And uh, um, basically what it has, patients with between 45 and 75, normal length, uh, stigmatism 0.75 and uh, lower, and uh, no other uh, disease. So this is only the small numbers. I know this is not real big data, but just to show you the notion. These are the uh, first results. This is a pre-op. Most of them at the uh, average of uh, almost uh, emetropia. K1, K2 in the normal range, cylinder less than uh, 0.75 in this size. And this is operation if it works. Yeah. And what is special in this uh, operation, what we are going to see here, is there is nothing special. This is a, a very simple, very straightforward uh, surgery. This is a classical uh, design of the C lens, and we you do it just like we do any other uh, uh, C lens. Very simple to, to implant, and uh, we can see the diffractive circles, which occupy a large portion of the lens. Once it is in the bag, then actually this is it. Sim uh, it's quite a simple and straightforward operation. So nothing special, nothing new, in this uh, in this regard. Okay, let's, let's proceed. Okay, uh, uh, the patient that we have spherical equivalent, uh, we started with a little bit of myopia in the first two cases, so we had a feeling that we need to modify a little bit the A constant, but eventually it went down to almost negligible myopia. This is uh, uncorrected distance intermediate and near vision. Uh, vision for distance was 67.5, 69 for intermediate, but this is most interesting because the near vision was superb. And this is something that all patients repeatedly uh, 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 said that their near vision is good and no complaints on readings, which is quite exceptional for these uh, trifocal lenses. The corrected uh, visual acuity is 6.6, 6.9, and 6.5 for the near. And for uh, both sides open, then the results are even better, 6.6, 6.7.5, and better than the 6.6, 6.5 for the near vision. As for the defocus curve, uh, the focus is around the zero. This is, uh, uh, and uh, better is up and worse is down. As for each individual eyes, we can see that the results were about zero, about almost emetropia. And what's interesting is that this is a flat curve, which means there is no distance, uh, no, no, um, different focus for intermediate, near, intermediate, but this is kind of a, uh, flat curve all around, which is the ideal multifocal lens. And with both eyes open, it was 6.6 six and better in most cases. These are the satisfaction uh, questionnaire. And as we can see, patients were happy. Just for needing, this is very demanding uh, for reading, but they uh, had no problem with the near vision as well. As for the visual phenomena, there was some glare, some halos but it was only after we asked them specifically, if you ask, do you have any problem? No. Do you see any glare or hello? So if you're asking, then we can say we, we did feel some. But it, this was not uh, uh, any complaint still. This is not a big data, it's only uh, just a few cases. Glass dependence, none of them had uh, a need for distance intermediate or near vision. And as for satisfaction, they were happy, but as I mentioned again and again, this is only a few eyes. So altogether, this is a very promising lens design that does provide uh, good depth of focus. I would like to emphasize once again the new vision, which is exceptional for this uh, lens. They are quite happy, and we are now going to continue with this study, and hopefully next year we come with some more clinical results. Thank you. <laughs>